Thank you so much, Kenneth. Just first off, wanted to thank Kenneth for hosting this. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, this morning, I, I tweeted, the first thing I did on waking up this morning was tweeted about this event, and the tweet was something about thank you, PKF. So if anyone of you tweets at PKF, um, hopefully you'll retweet, and then we'll get it all snowballing there. Uh, I, I so believe in that, getting the message out. But the other thing that I wanted to uh, sh uh, let you know was this is it's such a nice uh, facility, and I just love the way that our team has worked with your team to make it happen. So from now on, every other organization that wants to host us, the condition is going to be, can you do it the PKF way? So. <laughs> Uh, I, I seriously mean that, so thank you. Thank you all from PKF for working with our team, and we have several members of our team here. I want to thank them as well. Uh, it really means a lot to us, because uh, exactly as Kenneth said, there's just so much happening at Bauer College. You know, um, I remember several years ago, many, many years ago, I used to read Ayn Rand. Any of you readers of Ayn Rand? Okay, Atlas Shrugged, those Fountainhead, those books. And uh, they were trying to make Atlas Shrugged into a movie, and they went to Ayn Rand and they said, it's too voluminous, can you shorten it? And you know what she said, right? She said, can you shorten, condense the Bible? <laughs> and so I often think about that when, you know, when I'm asked to talk about what's happening in the college, because as Michael and Kay rightly pointed out, there's just so much happening and so much changing, even as we speak. Uh, but that's, what's, that's what makes it truly exciting. So. Uh, what I'd like to do is to give you a big picture view of what's happening in the college. Uh, but really, I'm hoping that this is a conversation. I would love to get your input because you know, we see so much from the inside, but it's really that outside perspective that we need because that's what we are all about, is making sure that we serve the community in Houston. That is our strategy. That is our playground, as I call it. Um, also want to uh, mention that, uh, you know, as Kenneth said, in the last, um, I want to say in the last three years, the uh, Dean's Advisory Board at Bauer College, um, you know, when I started, uh, when I was appointed Dean, the, the college is a big college, if you all haven't seen or heard. We have close to 6,000 students, 6,000 students at the business school, just in the business school, okay? That's larger than Rice University, right? That's larger than Princeton University, okay? So it's a big portfolio, and it can be overwhelming because there's so much happening and so much needs to happen. Um, but I remember there was a, I forget who it was, someone said this, when things get overwhelming, that's the first right thing to happen. If you wanna make a difference, you need to be overwhelmed because what happens when you, when you are overwhelmed there are two things you need to do. One is you need to use your brain and you need to start thinking. The other is you need to get smart people around you. And if you put the two together, you're not gonna be overwhelmed, things are gonna happen, and that's exactly what we try to do, is we expanded the Bauer College Board, okay? We expanded the board just in terms of numbers. It's about 38% larger than it was four years ago. And it's not just the numbers. It's not just, oh, we added you know, five more members or 10 more members and we ticked off these you know, diversity things and it's all this, everything looks good on paper. No, every one of them, and Dan Bello is on the board and I'm, I really appreciate Dan for being here as well. I love it when my board members work with each other. I love it when we do business with Cougars. I love it when we buy and sell to Bauer alums, right? Um, uh, Calhoun Street anymore, there is, if you come down Calhoun Street, and if you haven't been on campus, this is where I, you know, I digress, but I just cannot help myself because there's a lot happening. You go down Calhoun Street, you will see Pink's Pizza. Pink's Pizza is, is co-owned by a Bauer alum, J James Hong. Then you go to the Nook, which is co-owned by Derek Shaw, another Bauer alum. There's a whole, uh, you know, stream of restaurants there just um, making things happen, okay? And when we buy coffee anymore, I like to buy coffee from the Nook, because first off, I like the coffee, and second, it's a Bauer alum. You, you just cannot go wrong, right? Um, so I love it when our board members work with each other, when we do business with people on the board, 
because not only is it the right thing to do, but we actually find that we get a better product. So we've expanded the board, and the board has been so committed to helping the dean connect with the community, right? That's really what the Bauer College is all about, is connections. We want to keep our ears on the ground so we know when things change. And things, the ground is shifting every day, right? This morning, as I was getting ready to come here, uh, so this, the new way of doing business, right? If you think about what's happening, huge changes all over, whether it's the economy, whether it's energy, but just the way we do business, fractional ownership, right, is, is the in thing. Airbnb, any of you used Airbnb? Okay, uh, Airbnb, Uber probably, uh, those uh, zip cars you can rent, uh, TaskRabbit, okay, all these, you know, someone has, it's really connecting buyers and sellers, but doing it in a way that is just customized to your need. Ford Motor Company, I don't know if any of you heard this this morning, Ford Motor Company is now, has just announced a program where you can buy a Ford uh, automobile, and as long as you get it financed through Ford, they will allow you to do the following. So you come to work and your car is parked, um, you know, say it's parked in the parking lot from 8.30 to 5.30, and you really don't use it during the day. You can rent it out for part of the day, and Ford will help you manage that process. So it's like your, um, you know, those um, vacation things, right? You buy fractional ownership, now you can do that with your car. You can own the car and then you can rent it. The, 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 the Uber model is you rent the car, you don't have to own it. This you can do both, right? Just new ways of thinking, new business models. And immediately I started thinking about how do we bring that into education? And education is going through what I call um, a Schumpeterian moment, okay, Schumpeter, okay? Those of you who've read Schumpeter, I read Schumpeter 25 million years ago when I was an undergraduate student and studying economics, right? So his big theme was creative destruction. When you bring in a new model, it destroys the old, but in the process, you unleash a huge amount of creative energy and a new way of doing things, a better way of doing things. And that's happening in education. In order for us to take that concept and deliver to the community, we need to know what the community needs. And that's what my board is doing, is really helping the Bauer College engage with the community. So I always like to start with, okay, so who are we and what is our vision, okay? And um, I try to pick on these words that, I call it hashtag words, okay? So what's trending right now at Bauer is really the, the, the idea. Destination of choice. You know, we, don't, we want to be the place you go to. If you have a business need, if you want to get a degree, or you don't want to get a degree, but you want to learn, where do you go? And I want for us to say five years from now, everyone in the city of Houston says, of course you go to Bauer. If Bauer doesn't offer that in business, then you go elsewhere, okay? So we want it to be a destination of choice, whether you're learning, whether you're hiring, whether you're uh, needing some help on a fractional basis with some consulting expertise from our faculty, we want you to think of us as the destination of choice, okay? As opposed to, you know, I tried elsewhere and then I came to Bauer. And I'll tell you why, that's, that's not happening anymore. Uh, the last couple of weeks, we've been working, we, the university has been working with a team that doesn't seem to go away. They're from Costa Rica, great place. Kay knows this. Um, it's a great place to go on vacation, and they want us to come deliver a program there. And of course, I'm the only business. Um, I'm only. I'm the only dean who says we can do all that, but the model needs to make sense. We need to at least break even, right? So we're looking at the numbers, and it's it's really interesting because what I'm hearing is business. If you don't go, that's the deal breaker for this whole deal, right? Our brand is now being sought in locations that, I don't know that people knew about Bauer College, right? So it's a nice thing, and we want that to continue. So destination of choice, and Houston. Houston is really our strategy, okay? We have no qualms saying, we wanna be the best for Houston, okay? People say, don't you wanna be the best school in the world? What does that mean to be the best in the world, okay? 
if I can place my graduates at Exxon, if I can place my graduates at PKF, if I can place my graduates at all the companies in Houston, and guess what? The companies in Houston recruit in a global market, right? When you go to recruit, do you confine yourself to one market? You would like to guess the best talent anywhere. So whether I like it or not, whether I see it or not, my student from Bauer, when they go for their interview, they're competing with that person from somewhere else on this planet, right? So we are competing in a global market. But because Houston is so, is such a pathway to that globe, is such a connection to that, what's out there, I say, this is all about Houston. I have no qualms saying that's who we serve. So it's about Houston. What is our mission? Again, big words, a lot of words, big sentences, but three buckets. Knowledge, we need to create knowledge. We need to create new best practice, right? And I urge you to look at, to, to take a copy of the Inside Bauer magazine that was outside. Inside was outside. Um, it gives you the stories of what our faculty are doing. You know, what our faculty are doing, researching what's best out there in energy. Okay, there's someone who's working on what is the right financing structure for energy? Okay, is the MLP model the right model? Will it last? Is it going to last? I'm looking at something on corporate governance. Is, what's the new thing in corporate governance? What about compensation? Then there's a faculty member looking at how do you get people to say yes? How do you get people to be motivated? How do you get people to work out right? and, and stay, uh, stay on track? A whole bunch of research on that. Someone else is doing research on leadership. What, is, what does leadership mean when you have people working in 12 different time zones? Okay? So there's a lot in terms of that knowledge creation. Then there's the learning environment, right? So how do we learn? And we're moving from, it used to be, again, many years ago, I, you come to my class, I tell you what you need to learn. Not anymore, not anymore. Anymore, it is you all, the companies that recruit, you're there, you're, you're in the front line there, and you're telling us, you know, I need more uh, uh, graduates who can think about logistics. I have to work with people in 12 different time zones. I need to coordinate my global supply chain. Okay, we, we, we added a new member on the board who works at Texas Children's Hospital. And so we had our team go visit them, and uh, it was just interesting to see how dependent TCH is on making sure that they're sourcing properly, they're getting the right deals. It's a huge organization. It's a huge organization, right? So they need to make sure their pricing decisions are right. This is a skill that maybe 15, 20 years ago, given the size of organizations, it was not that much in demand. Anymore, that's, that's huge. So it's not me telling my student, hey, you need to learn this, but it's the, it's the person who hires my student telling me this is what your student needs to know so, so I can value them and they become first in line when I recruit, right? So that's what I mean by learning, is we need to think about what is it you need and very importantly, we need to deliver it to you in a way that you learn best, okay? I, this is uh, what, what's happening again in academia is it used to be called the sage on stage model. I'm the professor, you're the student. I lecture, I'm the sage, I'm on a stage and you listen. No, anymore it's a guide on the side, okay? We need to put together a, a, um, a group of people. It's not one person. It needs to be a faculty member. It needs to be an academic advisor. It needs to be a board member. It needs to be a mentor, a coach, who can t then walk the student through everything they need while they're in the program for two or three years or four years and beyond, right? And the, and the fascinating thing is we are slowly beginning to learn how to do this without changing the pricing model. The technology has allowed us anymore to incorporate your learning style, okay? If you come to Bauer College, you, you will see classrooms, traditional classrooms, where people still go listen to a lecture. And then you see a, a big reading room. Some, some students don't want to come to the lecture hall, but because a lot of it is available now on video, they'll sit there and watch that. And 
as I always say, they will rewind that video seven and a half times or eight times because the first time they didn't get it. And that's fine because one person doesn't get X, someone else doesn't get Y. In class, they'll ask you a question once, maybe twice. If they don't get it, they'll keep quiet. They can rewind the video 170 times, right? So we need to learn to customize what we deliver in a way that you learn best, okay? So learning models. And of course, all this doesn't mean anything unless we do something that's impactful. So responsible, grooming responsible citizens, right? And the uh, Inside Bauer magazine, I really uh, encourage you to take that, put it on your coffee tables, read it. Uh, I can assure you, you will not be disappointed. By the way, that magazine has won five awards this year? No, nine awards. This is what happens. This is like between uh, <laughs> 7 a.m. and this right now, it's added another four. But, but uh, Jessica and her team have done an amazing job uh, putting together that magazine. The magazine itself has won awards, right? So uh, there's content, but there's also that uh, putting together the magazine. So that's our mission. Um, so again, the hashtags here are destination of choice, knowledge learning, community, okay? And our goal really is your experience when you come to Bauer College. With all that, <clears throat> like I said, who are we? Close to 6,000 students, um, about even male-female ratios. Uh, in fact, it gets interesting. At the undergraduate level, it's about 30% more female graduates than male graduates, yes. Um, look at those numbers, right? Right below the female. 11% foreign, 73% non-white, right? That is our brand. And I say that, you know, I, th that's, that's a huge thing. You, you don't really, when you're in Houston, you take it for granted. Uh, I was in New York all of last week. New York is pretty diverse, you'd think, right? I was sitting in a room with these people and I look around me and it's, it's nowhere. It's nothing compared to Houston, right? And, and that diversity is important, not just because, oh yeah, it's a good thing to be diverse and you know, the so-and-so mandated that. No, it's not about that. It's, it's great in a learning environment. What I mean by that diversity is, what that really translates into is, you go into a room and you're comfortable with people thinking so differently from you, from the way you do, believing in things that are so different, and yet you can work together in a meaningful relationship to make things happen, that diversity of thought is hugely, hugely valuable to any organization. And if you haven't bought into that 10 years from now, that's where the world is go going. And the amazing thing to me is, because we're in Houston, we're able to bring that inside our classroom. Uh, yesterday, we were looking at mag business school magazines that we receive. We look at all these other business school magazines to see what they're doing, right? And you look at some of them, they look wonderful, but there's no diversity, right? And you see that when your graduates come back to you and say, you know, I never really thought about this, but this is, I'm so comfortable working in a team, in a group, right? That's what most organizations struggle with. And that's, that's who we are. And we didn't try to make it happen. I always say we don't aspire to be something we already are. We are diverse and we celebrate that, okay? But I don't take that lightly, I think, I think that's huge. In terms of faculty, we have about 184 faculty. Um, sometimes I wish we had more, sometimes I wish we had less. It all depends on, <laughs> it all depends on how they behave that day, so. Um, but but it's, it's a good thing overall since Kay and Michael are here. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, but seriously, our faculty, again, I encourage you to read the magazine, just amazing things what our faculty are doing. Uh, you know, uh, just doing things that connect. If you go to a business school and you say, I want to learn a certain skill, and that skill is not in the curriculum, very few schools will actually say, yes, let's try to do that. In our case, you talk to Michael, or you talk to Kay, or you talk to anyone at Bauer College, and you say, this is what we're struggling with. Help us identify people that have these skills We'll either say, yes, we have some people you can talk to, or we'll say, you know, we've never thought of putting that into the curriculum, but we don't stop there. We take that back, we put a curriculum around it, and then we deliver. So that's what this, um, oh, rankings, I'm gonna really 
skip through this real quick. Rankings, it's a good thing. Uh, it's nice to say we're ranked, and it means a lot. It does, believe me, it does. I don't take that as the indicator of performance because I really think at the end of the day, my students need to be valuable players in your organizations. And if you tell me that, that to me is worth a lot more than these rankings. But again, you know, we need to show this, so I'm gonna do that and then move on. Okay, our strategy, like I said, where do we play and how do we win? We play in Houston, that's our playground. Okay, you take a course in strategy, those are the two questions they'll ask you to answer, right? <laughs> what is your strategy, right? It's not a plan, it is what makes you different? What is it that you have that no one else has? What we have, we celebrate the fact that it's Houston and we are here to serve Houston. Show me any other business school in this area, in this region, in the country that has that strategy. I defy you to do that. If you do, let me know, I'd love to hear that. How do we win? What is our, what is our modus operandi? Three things, engage, innovate, and impact, okay? Let me talk a little bit about that. <clears throat> what do I mean by engage? <clears throat> So we are you know, 5,900 students, 6,000 students. This is a large group. We have a whole portfolio of programs, BBA, seven majors, MBA, um, you know, all kinds of programs. What we've tried to do is we engage you. How do we engage you? In smaller groups. We have 10 or 12 different centers of excellence. Okay? What are these centers of excellence? Okay, let's start with the, uh, the Wolf Center. Right? The Wolf Center was started almost 20, more than 20 years ago. How did it start? Okay, everyone, anymore in, in Houston, entrepreneurship, Bauer, people connect that. We've been ranked in the top three in the country for seven years in a row, okay? Uh, I always worry when we're ranked number one because there's nowhere else to go. So <clears throat> it's a good thing. How did it start? Frankly, it started because, and, and Bill Sherrill is not here, uh, he, he served in Iwo Jima, okay? He was not your typical academic, but he had an idea which was, um, you know, can we uh, enable young minds to think about new ventures, forming new ventures, okay? It was a time when people thought, no, surely you can't teach those skills. You can't teach entrepreneurship. Can you teach entrepreneurship to an 18-year-old? No, that's too dangerous, that's too risky, okay? <laughs> And now you have these 12 year olds starting multi-million dollar businesses, right? And selling it to Facebook. And then you become, you serve them. So it was started 20, 20 years ago, over 20 years ago. And it, my point is it didn't start because a dean said, go make this happen, no. Someone had an idea and the dean's office said, great idea, we won't stand in your way, move on. And, and it flourished. But it happened because we connected with the community. Today, the Wolf Center graduates, you know, they keep it very selective about, you come to the University of Houston, you can take courses in entrepreneurship, anyone can. So we, you know, we, I think it's about 3,000 students that take courses. But if you want to major in entrepreneurship, that's a different thing, that's a different route. Then they interview you, make sure you're qualified, and there's about 40, 40 students who major in entrepreneurship every year, okay? 40 students, and every year they host a graduation event for these students. At this event, and I'm not exaggerating, our team is here, Maya is here, Anne is here, they come to these events. The last one in May, 293 mentors for 40 students, okay? 293 mentors for 40 students. So do the ratio on that, right? The multiple on that. And these mentors are not faculty, they're not people that we said, you need to be so-and-so's mentor. This is, we now have an active list of people that want to mentor, that want to participate, and they're helping these students understand that, yes, it's about the curriculum, but life doesn't stop when you come outside the classroom, right? It's a holistic approach to development. That's what that Wolf Center is about, okay? And how do we do that? We do that by engaging the community, okay? the Stanford Alexander Center for Excellence in Real Estate, and Dan is here, Dan uh, knows how this all happened. Uh, about four or five years ago, uh, a team of real estate professionals came to the Bauer College and said, you know, if only we knew the things that we know today, if only we knew this 25 years ago when we started doing what we do now, we're very successful now, but 
if only we had known some of these things then, we could have done even better, right? Who was that? It was a group of real estate professionals. It wasn't academics. It, were, it wasn't necessarily people with PhDs. But they said, we need this. We need it because Houston needs it. And we're going to support you. We're going to help you with the curriculum. So what did we do? We formed a board. We have 38 board members now. And we've had to move our board meetings because the board has grown so big that we can't accommodate them in the room that we used to, right? Okay. And interestingly, participation at our board meetings is at all time highs. The reason I say that is those board members, the board is the one that helped us put together a curriculum. What does this curriculum look like? You look at any other curriculum in real estate in the country, you'll have a few courses in real estate finance, REITs. What is REITs about? How do you invest in REITs? Our program is unique. It's about the fact that real estate development is not just about finance, it's not just about putting the deal together, it's not just about a contract, it's not just about negotiating the deal, it's all these things and more. And so the board today helps with the curriculum, they participate in the classroom, some of them actually teach in the classroom, they hire our students for internships, they provide placement to these students, right? In fact, I look at what they're doing and I think, you know, I wish I wish I were able to participate in this board, in this program, right? So that's what I mean by engage. And every one of these centers, that's the goal, is we engage the community to form these programs, to develop these programs. And that leads us to the next step, which is innovation. We have to be there. We have to be at that cutting edge. In the last uh, three years, we've introduced four new master's programs. Again, why? Because really input from the board, input from boards, different boards. We have so many boards now at the Bauer College. We have a master's in uh, supply chain management, which seems to be hot. Uh, we have, uh, you know, our program grew from 45 students in, at the undergraduate level to about 565 students majoring in supply chain today. So we said there's a need for it at the master's level, okay? Masters in supply chain, masters in uh, information systems, in global energy, and in uh, marketing. We have 19 certificate programs. What are certificate programs? As part of your electives, you can do certain things. You can specialize in real estate. What we did was we said, okay, if you specialize in real estate, then when you graduate, you not only get your diploma, which says MBA, but you also get a certificate in real estate development. We have a $10 million Cougar investment fund. Actual dollars, not fake dollars, and not endowment money. Not money the university says, okay, go play with it. If you make mistakes, it's okay. No, this is a group of investors from the community investing in this fund. And so the students who manage every part of the fund, they make the buy, sell, uh, hold decisions, they consummate, the, they make the trades happen, and they are accountable to the investors. Quarterly meetings where students present and defend their positions. And I want to say that over its 10, 11 year history, the average performance, we've beat the S&P index by 37 basis points over that time period. So. It's something that we actually uh, take very seriously. So the Cougar Investment Fund. Um, so you can do a certificate in investment. Okay, you can do a certificate in um, oil and gas. You can do a certificate in, um, in energy management. You can do a certificate in uh, internet, um, internet marketing. Okay, a few years ago we saw the Google was doing this online marketing challenge where they get students from all over the world to participate in an event and then they pick winners. And our students said, let's try that. So we hired a person who is known for his expertise in marketing and he forms teams of students. The students participate for the last three years. Every year, these students have placed first, second or third in that online marketing challenge. How many students participate across the, across the globe? over 12,000 students from 36 different countries, right? So again, it, it's engaging and it's trying to be different about what we do. And then we have tracks now, in addition to the certificates. Uh, again, two years ago, bankers <coughs> came to us and said, 
you know, we go to uh, Sam Houston, we go to a and to recruit students in banking. Great programs, no, no question. We said, yeah, you can go there, but you don't have to go all that far. You can actually come here if you tell us what you need. And what did they say? They said, okay, we need 15 hours of accounting, we need nine hours of finance, and we need six hours of selling skills to groom bankers. And we need to come talk to your students and say, despite what you read out there about the banks being mean and ugly and all this, banking is a good profession. So we said, okay, bankers, 18 of them can come, and now they come every four months, and they work with our students, and we have a track in commercial banking. So again, this innovation does not happen without your engagement. And the impact, of course, is it shows in our metrics. We've adopted certain metrics at the college. What are they? Retention rate. Retention rate is a big challenge for universities. It's the fact that on average in this country, if you didn't know, out of 10 undergraduate students that come to college, forget the ones that don't even make it to college, out of every 10 that come to college, less than four of them actually graduate, right? Why is that? We lose them. We lose them in the hallways. We lose them because Sometimes they don't have the resources. Sometimes they have the resources, but there's no one there nudging them, telling them they can do it, right? Um, so this retention rate is huge for us. We want you to come back. We want you to graduate, ideally in four years if you're an undergraduate, not more than six years. Our retention rate at Bauer is 88%, okay? That's the same rate that you would see if you looked at tier one universities. And I say this because it's not easy. It's not easy. The average retention rate at UH is much lower. Okay? It's not easy. Why is that happening? Because, as I said, it's that 295 mentors that stand outside the classroom to hold our students' hands when someone says, I'm having car problems. Someone called me the other day and said, you know, I will never forget the day that I had to come to make a presentation and my car, I had, a, had problems with my car and I called my my uh, instructor, my professor, Dr. Newman, and he said, don't worry about your presentation. Handle your car, it'll all get fixed, and then we can talk about your presentation. And that student said, I will never forget that experience, right? We need to make that happen for the, if you want the students back, because that's what it's about. So our retention rate, we focus on that. We focus on that holistic learning, graduation rate, placement rate, right? We're, we're talking about why is it that liberal arts majors have a hard time finding jobs. Liberal arts is critical to our learning experience, but we need to have pathways for them to find something meaningful when they graduate. So I, it's not enough for me as dean to say, oh, my students are all graduating if they don't have jobs, right? At the end of the day, that's what they need and that's why they come to school. So we have a moral responsibility to train them to look for their jobs. Now, I wish we could guarantee them jobs. We cannot, we're not there yet. So. Placement rate is extremely important. Then the next step is, how do I know that, you know, Kenneth graduated, Kenneth is involved, now how do I, what is it about Kenneth that's making him want to be involved? What can I do to make sure that every alum of Bauer is involved? One metric that universities use, one metric that the rankings people use is, doesn't matter how much they give, you can give a dollar. As alumni, if you give, that tells us something. It tells us that we did something that maybe touched not just you know your degree and everything, something about touching your heartstrings, right? We want you to come back and we want you to say, we support what you're doing. The amount is immaterial. So the giving rate is another metric we use. And again, it all feeds into this engagement. Research, of course, it's important that our faculty do research. And at the end of the day, all this needs to come back to, are we increasing our enrollment? Are people wanting to come to us? So these are not soft metrics, these are hard metrics, and we hold everyone at Bauer responsible for that, right? So uh, every one of our groups, the budget report, tell me, you know, you're doing great things. Everyone's doing great things, right? Oh, I'm doing this new initiative, it's a leadership. You put leadership on anything and people think, oh, that's the best thing that's in sliced bread. Okay, that's a great initiative, but tell me how that's gonna impact these metrics, okay? Uh, again, three years ago, actually two years ago, we were talking about how do we improve our reach in the community, and, and we're doing a lot of these leadership initiatives. One more initiative, let's do it with HISD, let's do it with KIPP. I said, we need to see impact. 
how do I know that you're, what you're doing translates into that student wanting to come to Bauer? So we started offering summer camps, okay? Summer camps, there's a lot of places offering summer camps. The Y offers summer camps. Universities offer summer camps. Duke, if those of you who have kids, Duke offers those great summer camps. Surely, we can offer summer camps at Bauer, right? So we started offering summer camps two years ago in three areas. <coughs> Sales, we have a great sales program, entrepreneurship, and energy, okay? That first year, we had about 100 students apply, and this is free for one week. If you have a high schooler who is interested in these three areas, and they apply and they're selected, they come to Bauer, they spend a whole week at the university, no charge, and they go through a curriculum every day of the week, it's a fascinating experience, fascinating experience. And I watch them the last day when they present what they learn uh, to whoever wants to attend. Hundred and, I think it was 108 applicants that first year, and we recruited 75 students free of charge. The last year, we had 516 applicants from 12 states. And our marketing budget is, oh, don't even talk about it. Okay. But, with the limited resources we have, by word of mouth, this has now reached 12 states. This year, for the first time, I had um, high school counselors from all over the country come to Bauer to learn about what we do. People from um, New Jersey, from uh, Baltimore. How can we get our high schoolers to attend these camps? And I said, apply, and of course they did. So right now we're in the midst of, we have more than 1,000 applicants this year. And my camp counselors are telling me, can you give us more money? We just need to make this happen. It's a great thing. We just need more resources. That's what I mean by impact. And why is that impactful is because not only are they doing a good job, many of them are now thinking about college. And you know, it, it's great if they come back to us, but it's okay if they don't, you know, that's fine too. And the stories that come out of those camps are just amazing. Our entrepreneurship students, let me just <clears throat> give you another story. <clears throat> you know, we used to do entrepreneurship programs and a lot of our students go on to start their own business, right? You have BBs, you all eat at BBs, it's a Bauer entrepreneur. The breweries. Um, um, Eighth Wonder. Eighth Wonder, yes. Yes, and today we have, yes, Chris. Buffalo Bayou Brewery. Buffalo Bayou Brewery. <laughs> Buffalo Bayou Brewery. We have um, just so many businesses here that really the people who started this went to Bauer. So two years ago, the university said, okay, we have a challenge. We have all these great researchers, the engineering, the scientists who work in these labs, and they get fascinated by valves and tubes and you know, uh, weird smelling chemicals. Uh, but they're doing good things, right? They're finding cures for cancer, they're purifying water, they're talking about batteries, all that. But they need to commercialize that. Like we say, that's all great, but unless you pull those ideas into the marketplace, you're not going anywhere, okay. So they said, okay, you're, you keep telling us all this, show us how to get there. So what did we do? We paired our entrepreneurship students with these researchers, okay? The university's revenue from IP used to be uh, uh, f less than $4 million 10 years ago. Today it's $16 million, right? And not all of that is power, but um, the, the, the reason I bring that up is now our students are working with these researchers. They're taking the technology they develop in the labs out to the marketplace. One of those groups has actually founded a company that's now located on campus. They're in the water purification business. So just big leaps in terms of impact, okay? The second thing we did in entrepreneurship, we started hosting Red Labs. If, if you haven't been to Bauer, I, again, I invite every one of you here, I will take you around, and this is a promise, um, and my staff will hold me accountable. I will take you around and show you these rooms. There's a room that was really not a great looking room, but the person who wanted to do this said, you know, I'm, I'm working with these um, young students from all over campus. Someone from technology comes and says, they have a new app they want to develop, right? Um, and then the business school students say, okay, let's work on this. So we created a space, it's called Red Labs. What is Red Labs? 
they call it all these fancy names, accelerator, um, all these things. To me, it's a room with ramen noodles and tons of coffee, okay? <laughs> and some really funky looking furniture. People come, and you go in there, students come there, some of them will be spending the night there. <laughs> but, but, you talk about ideas, you talk about innovation, you talk about incubation, that's where it's happening, okay? And we started doing what's called this three-day startup. Three-day startup, anyone heard of that? This actually it started in Texas. What, there's this entrepreneur who says, okay, I want to help people develop entrepreneurial ideas. So what do we do on Friday evening? We open it to, up to all students on campus, Bauer student, law center, engineering, technology, whatever. You're interested, you apply, and we'll select 40 students. We put you into teams. You have no idea what, which team you're going to be in. Between Friday afternoon and Sunday evening, you work 24 hours and you work with your team to come up with an idea. You do the market research on that. You come up with a business plan. And Sunday evening at 6 o'clock, you present your ideas. You get 10 minutes to present to a panel of seven or eight venture capitalists, entrepreneurs. There's no prize, but they give you feedback. They give you feedback so you can actually take your idea forward. It, it's, you know, I don't know what the word is, but it's just grown, it's just caught fire. It's like three-day startup is a huge event for us. And then last year, Rice University, the, those, the, it's called OwlSpark at Rice University, they came to us and they said, let's work together to make this happen. So we're working with them, and the whole idea is you put smart 18-year-olds, and people say, 18-year-olds, can they really do all this? Yes, they can, they absolutely can. You just have to believe in them and you know, make it happen. So they're all working together to make, just to, to bring great ideas to fruition. So that's what we mean by impact. The rest of this, I think, is a bunch of pictures. Oh, just one other thing. So I don't, this, you can't see this, but this, you just have to believe me. This is what was posted outside one of the rooms at Bauer. It's on sticky notes. Uh, one day I was just walking down the hallway and the, the notes uh, read, where awesome happens. Who posted it? The students did. So from that day on, that's what we use as our, uh, as our what's the word, tagline, where awesome happens. If the students say awesome happens, we believe that. So the idea is to make it happen. Um, the rest of it, how can you help us? People always ask me this, and since you asked, um, how can you help us? I always say, if you want to learn, if you want to retool, Education is not a one-time, four-year experience. It's a lifelong experience, right? Um, you want to do that? Think about Bauer. If it's related to business, um, at least ask us. We might say we don't do that and suggest an alternative. Um, so learn at Bauer, hire from Bauer, and give to Bauer. How may we help you? I'm sure I've gone way beyond my time, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. How may we help you? Any ideas, questions? Yes, thank you. I just want to say that was wonderful, and you are helping us. Oh. We hire from Bauer. We you hire who? technology. Interns? Yeah, interns, and we, we keep them. Mm -hmm. Our whole team came from Bauer. So it's really kind of very cool. We do the H-1B visa for them. That's, that's our whole hiring program at Cognac. So nice. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for believing in us yeah, and hiring absolutely. our students. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just been wonderful. And, and as far as 18-year-olds go, I truly believe they don't know what they can't do. So they right. can do anything. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I don't right. want anyone who knows what they can't do. I'll tell them what they can't do. But I don't <laughs> Excellent. Do. I mean, thank you. That's awesome. That's so wonderful. Thank you very much. No, thank you, Great. Lisa. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. We're in the same boat to hire from Bauer. About probably 30% of our office staff from different locations are from Bauer. Maybe if, you know, outside, uh, making it a little bit easier process. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when we post ad, uh, con connecting the ads with the students more. Right now we have uh, a lot of jobs that we were trying to hire accounting positions. I see. Staff account. So making it where more students find out. Mm -hmm. we talk about, but we want to hire from Bauer because kids that come from Bauer have more real life experience. 
Sunshine, the kids went down from my belief school. It's kind of a little bit more practical. Mm -hmm. The good, the great. Now I want to hear the not so good. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm the president of the Houston IMA, which is the local interactive markers association, uh -huh. and uh, and we're an all volunteer organization. And three years ago, we started doing a career fair, and U of H, uh, Bauer College hosts, hosted us, and it's grown exponentially. Whereas this past year, Steve Koch is our uh, is our connection over there and um, and we had a record number this year we had 22 exhibitors um, that we paired up with uh, 600 uh, students which was a record number in its third third year for the career fair so it's just been the space is amazing it's it's fantastic to be able to have that kind of resource that we can provide something like career fair which we wouldn't be able to do if, if we had to pay for uh, costs of location and things like that and then uh, some of the students that pitch in to help um, right. organize that and and recruit even from other campuses and bring them over and things like that. It's just, it's very collaborative and we're really great for the community. Nice, nice. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you to Kenneth and his team. This is what I call uh, a model board member. So thank you. <laughs>